Democrats are taking their fight against dark money to another level, pushing for a constitutional amendment that would give Congress the right to set limits on how much money can be raised and spent. Senate leaders Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid sat side by side yesterday at a committee hearing testifying on the subject. Take a listen. How could everyday working American families afford to make their voices heard if money equals free speech? American families can't compete with billionaires. Everyone on this committee knows this proposal is never going to pass Congress. This is a political exercise, and that's all it is. The goal here is to, stop up, to stir up one party's political base so they'll show up in November. I want to bring in MSNBC contributor Victoria DeFrancesco Soto and GOP pollster Chris Wilson. Victoria, let me start with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Look, McConnell does make the point a constitutional amendment isn't going to go anywhere. It would take a two-thirds vote in each chamber to pass it. So why are Democrats going there? Well, we're starting the process, right? It probably won't get passed this year, maybe next year, but the conversation has started. And it's based on not just the Democratic, small d Democratic theory of, you know, we are a government for the people, not a government for the 1% or for the people that can write checks. So this is really at the core of the issue. And also, Chris, the logistical argument of it. We spend so much time raising money that we're not spending time governing or legislating. President President Obama went to 221 fundraisers in the 2012 cycle. He should have been using that time legislating, governing. So again, a lot of problems that we're starting to attack. And Americans seem to be interested in this, Chris. According to last month's CBS News poll, 71% of respondents said they support limiting the amount of money that individuals can give to political campaigns. Only 25% <coughs> they should give as much as they like. And, and according to the Center for Responsive Politics, outside spending in the 2014 election cycle has already passed the $100 million marks. So do Democrats have a point? Something needs to get done on this. Well, <clears throat> the point is, is this is governed by the Constitution. It's as if Harry Reid and the Democrats want to focus on the most ridiculous political issue they can find. We've got an economy that's still failing, negative growth in the first quarter, and they want to practice. Well, they would do say it's ridiculous to want people stunt. to have an equal voice, no matter how much money you have. It's dog whistle politics of the worst kind. I mean, you've got all the next thing week they may ha want to have committee hearings on banning the Tea Party. The fact is, the Constitution governs this, and it's never going to pass. It's a political stunt, and it's just an idea to try and turn people out and appeal to their base. And, and it really is a complete waste of time. When to the to your point earlier, there is a bigger issues that can be dealt with. And in any way, if you want to cite polling, there's all kinds of uh, American support for banning flag burning is over in almost 90 percent in a lot of polls. Yet it is still governed by the Constitution. And you can't go change the Constitution because you don't like religion, because you don't like a certain activity of political speech, or because you don't like the way in which political speech is delivered. And, and in Harry fact, Reed I to should say, to your point, to Senator Ted Cruz characterized this as an assault on the First Amendment. Let me play that. Forty-two Democrats have signed their name to a constitutional amendment that would give Congress the power to muzzle Planned Parenthood and the national right to life. 42 Democrats have signed their name to giving Congress the right to muzzle the Sierra Club, to muzzle the National Rifle Association and the Brady Center on handgun violence. So he makes that argument, and Victoria, there's also an argument about it. The American people look at this stuff and say, you know what, what about jobs, what about the economy? Is there a risk in Democrats uh, in, in pursuing this? I, I don't think there is, Chris, and this is going back to the polls that you cited, and it's about the majority of the people, the majority of the people who can't cut these big checks, who can't cut these unlimited amounts of funding to give to elected officials, and they want their voices heard. Everybody wants their voice heard. That's what's so great about living in America, but when you are handicapped by the 1% having an inordinate amount of influence, and they do, Chris, because we know from research, from political science research, that looks at bills passed by Congress that, yes, the preferences of the average American, largely those of us who are 
poorer than the 1% are not getting heard while those of business and corporations are. So and, and I wonder sometimes, uh, you know, Chris, and we've it, talked about this before, Chris, business. if I can, and, I, and we don't have a lot of time, yeah. but does it also risk making a lot of this irrelevant because you get bombarded with ads, especially if you live in a state where there is a very important election, a close election, or, or you're in a battleground state for the presidential election, at some point you just tune it out and, and that can be counterproductive. Well, I don't. Studies it don't show that. Apathetic. First of all, and I think your point your point is fair in terms of, of people tuning things out, but that's not what occurs. I think more communication is a good thing. The more people learn about candidates is a good thing. So that's not a negative. But I want to point out it's really dangerous when you have politicians start to ban things they don't like, be it political speech or in this case opponent speech, because they don't like it and they try and change the constitution. And if that is the hit, fortunately that is why we have the Bill of Rights is to stop things like that from happening. And I, I think any more they would be right to it, it is wrong to ban. A certain religion because you may disagree with it because a minority of the people believe in it. It's equally wrong to ban a certain type of political speech because a majority well, what may about be against Chris Wilson, Victoria D. Francesco Soto, we are out of time to be continued. Thank, <laughs> Thank you both. You. Thank you. Checking the news feed this morning.